I'm tenured professor of Guangzhou TCM University. He's born in Kaiping and Guangdong province in China. His father is Mr. Deng Mengjue, was a very famous TCM master in South China. He started he started to learn TCM from his father when he was a little boy. This is Kai Ping and the Professor Deng born in here. And here is Guangzhou, here is Hong Kong, here is Macau. After qualified from Guangzhou under Professor Deng used practice in Hong Kong during the Second World War because Japanese uh, invited Guangzhou and uh, he escaped to, from Guangzhou to Hong Kong. But after very soon, and uh, Hong Kong also occupied by Japan, and he had to go back to Guangzhou and Wuhan and practice in these uh, cities. So he studied Chinese medicine <coughs> in Guangdong TCM school from 1932 to 37. That is a five-year full-time education, uh, like uh, the TCM University nowadays. It's uh, five years. <coughs> he learned TCM also from some famous TCM master in Guangdong province. They are Chen Yuejiao, Guo Yao Qing, and Xie Gengping. That is uh, the, their picture of that year. Under from 1937 to 49, he practiced and teaching TCM in Guangdong, Hong Kong, and uh, Wuhan. And uh, from 1950 to 56, teaching and practice in Guangzhou TCM University. And then Guangzhou TCM College, and then Guangzhou TCM University. Uh, about uh, he used visit and uh, delivered the academic speech in Japan, America, Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong, France, and uh, the, Australia. Sorry, Dr. Tang, the slide is not moving. S slide not moving. Yeah, sorry. It's, it's still, not, still stick on you about me. Yeah, now it's about about Professor Deng Tie Tao Lang. You, you can't see this picture. Uh, it's okay. Okay, now it's okay on, on the uh, map. It is on the map. How about not this one? Yeah, it's moving, moving now. Okay, maybe uh, I don't use a full screen. If okay, screen. maybe maybe just yeah, this yeah. is okay. Yeah. Okay, the, the moment is okay about the uh, <coughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, good, thank you. And that is uh, Professor Deng uh, used the uh, delivery speech in uh, many different countries. And this is uh, his introduction in the Wikipedia. And uh, this is <coughs> the publication of Professor Deng Tietao, just the sum of his publication. He has too many books published. <coughs> Uh, one minute. I need to unmute uh, some because some people is talking behind me. Okay, that is uh, the books uh, which is published by Professor Deng. And this, some other books. And this is from a uh, published English version, yeah, for practice of diagnosis in the Chinese medicine. Yes. Yeah. 
upstairs. Okay, I need to study. Right. Okay. And Professor Deng advocate the unique syndrome of the syndrome differentiation diagnosis of Shang Han and Wen Bing. He had accumulated practice clinic experience in his more than 80 years clinic experience. Oh, he is expert at a myasthenia gravis digestive disease and cardiovascular disease. He is the presentative finger of the contemporary Lingnan medicine. Lingnan is the source in the Swan, Sui Dynasty and Lingnan including Guangdong province, Guangxi province, East Fujian and the South Hunan province and Hainan province and the North Vietnam. All this area called Lingnan. So Lingnan medicine have a unique characteristic in TCM. Professor Deng used to <coughs> treating a lot of uh, uh, leader of the country and the and Communist Party, and this <coughs> he write to Xu Xiangqian, Marshal Xu Xiangqian in 1984, uh, after uh, he uh, treating uh, Xu Xiangqian's uh, uh, lung infection. And uh, this is, uh, he used the right to, in the 1998, he wrote to Zhu Rongji, primary Zhu Rongji, and uh, to advise the government to pay more attention to traditional Chinese medicine. And this is the letter he wrote to Hu Jintao in 2003, suggest the government to use the Chinese medicine to fight SARS. So that is uh, my uh, PhD presentation after my presentation, <coughs> that is uh, more than 20 years ago. And <coughs> this is my post-doctor presentation. Um, Professor also attended my presentation. <coughs> this is uh, my PhD uh, paper uh title and uh, my name and professor Deng Tie Tao tutor's name only here uh you can if you click this link you can read my paper uh with the english obstruction this is a reference of professor Deng uh, for my postdoctoral study in the 1998 he write the reference later to me for me yeah and I dedicate to study Professor Deng's academic thought and uh, clinic experience since 1995. Even I study <coughs> as his student only three years in Guangzhou TCM University. But after that, I keep on to uh, research his academic thought. Every time when I back to Guangzhou and I visit Dr. Professor Deng, he will send me his book. Um, and uh, that is, I visited him at uh, 2014, and that is last time I saw, I saw him in the 2018. Uh, I delivered a speech at uh, the 13th World Conference of Chinese Medicine in 2016 in the New Zealand. Dr. Uh, Professor Deng wrote to me in uh, 1997. Uh, if you can read Chinese here, I translate to Tie Jun Tang. Traditional Chinese medicine is uh, treasures of the Chinese culture and it should be carried forward and uh, dedicated for a whole life. So that is, I spent about uh, 20 minutes to introduce <coughs> Professor Deng. 
you know, the TCM is uh, experience medicine. The longer clinic experience, the more effective because he gets feedback from the patient. He treating his ex clinic experience is over 80 years. From the 1937, uh, from the 1937, uh, 1937, he qualified until he died 2019. That is 82 years practice. So he must have some unique clinic experience. We need, it's worth us to sum up and to hand it down. And uh, what is the metabolic syndrome? Metabolic syndrome refers to a cluster of the cardiovascular disease risk, risk factors, including type 2 diabetes, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, and obesity. The history of the metabolic syndrome uh, <coughs> at, can start from the 1920s. And at the 1970s, the term of the metabolic syndrome was only coined in the 1950s and then become commonly used in the 1970s. In the 1977, Heller was studying the risk factor of associated with the cardioarthrosclerosis. Uh, he used to the term of the metabolic syndrome. In the 19 78, Philip introduced the concept, concept that not only predispose the heart disease, but are also associated with the obesity, glucose intolerance, high glycerol, triglyceride, and glucose and cholesterol. In 1988, Raven noticed that the hyperlipidemia, hypertension, and the insulin resistance often cluster together. He put forward the concept of X syndrome, and in the 1997, Zemit suggested to use the conception of the metabolic syndrome, and from 1999, WHO gave the work definition of the metabolic syndrome. So it's quite new. Uh, uh, the WHO just gave this from the 1999, uh, gave this a uh, formal conception. When I qualified, when most of us qualified this before that year, so we are not, we never learned this when at our university. So uh, that is the CPD, we need to understand this. Uh, Actually, metabolic syndrome is a new conception of a group of old disease. The conception is quite new, but the disease old, like high blood pressure and diabetes, high cholesterol, it's nothing new, it's old, older disease. It is very common disease, so common. I'm quite sure many of people you have seen or your family or your friend or some people around you must have suffered from this condition. And Professor Deng's unique clinic experience is very effective in treating these conditions. Uh, let's see the diagnosis criteria. The diagnosis criteria have um, in the world no <coughs> unique uh, unit uh, diagnosis criteria, but uh, these four <coughs> diagnosis standard is quite commonly used. First is IDF and AHA criteria. That means International Diabetes from Federation, IDF, 
and American Heart Association. This is used in the US. And second is WHO's criteria. And third one is uh, NCEP criteria, that is National Cholesterol Education Program. This is also from the US. You, in Europe, Europe country, under uh, we use EGIR criteria, that is European Group for the Study of the Insulin Resistance. So different country maybe use a different uh, diagnosis standard. Uh, let's see uh, <coughs> some of the standard. So uh, first is the IDF and AHD, AHA diagnosis criteria from the 2004. And in three of the following, <coughs> that is, and in three of the following, that is uh, increased waste circumference for the men is 102 centimeter in the women is 88 centimeter if if more than this standard that in the asia in asia uh, <coughs> that is in the <coughs> western people but in asia men is uh, more than 80 centimeter and uh, uh, 90 centimeter and the women is 80 centimeter so the asia men and women and for western men and women slightly different that means if you have a big tummy you have the risk if you have one of the big tummy and also elevated triglycerides <laughs> triglycerides and increased cholesterol and decreased HDL, HDL decreased. Blood pressure is high, more than 130 over 85 milliliter. And uh, fast plasma glucose level is more than 5.6 millimole per liter. So that is, you don't need to have all of them. That is uh, five of them. If you only, in these five, if you have three of the falling, you can diagnose <coughs> the metabolic syndrome. WHO standard is like this. One require present one of the falling, one of the <coughs> diabetes and impaired glucose intolerance, impaired fast glucose and insulin resistance, one of these and plus two of the 40. In these four items, if they have a two of 40, you can give the diagnosis of a metabolic syndrome. That is the blood pressure high and the blood lipid abnormal increased and obesity, central obesity. And uh, this is, you can find some protein in the urea. Protein in the urea and obesity and uh, cholesterol high and uh, blood lipid high and uh, blood pressure high. If you have two of them with this, one of these column and two of in this column, that is enough to diagnosis according to WHO standard. This is the European diagnosis standard. <coughs> one of these and any two or more of the following. One of this, one of this insulin resistance. And with in this fall, if they have two, that is enough, which is the increased waste circumference more than 94 centimeter for men and more than 80 centimeter for women and the second is 
triglyceride level is more than two millimole and HDL cholesterol level is less than one point millimole. Or the treatment for the reduce the blood lipid level. That means they take the satin, something like that, for reduce the blood lipid. Even it is getting control, but it, because that is con uh, reduced by the satin. And thirdly, it's fasting plasma glucose. And uh, concentra concentration is more than 6.1 millimole. And uh, number four is blood pressure more than 140 or 190 milliliter. Or the treatment for the elevated blood pressure. <coughs> so with these four, with any two of them with the insulin resistance, you can give the diagnosis of the metabolic syndrome. Uh, I said metabolic syndrome is a very, very common disease. Let's see the etiology, uh, 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 epidemiology, uh, epidemiology. The prevalence of the metabolic syndrome varies from country to country, rise under the definition they used. One study in the US found the prevalence of the 44% in the people over 60 years old. <coughs> Not uh, the whole people group, just the, the, on the over 60 years population, about 44% people, nearly half have diabetes, have a metabolic syndrome. That is a lot. Look at this picture. This is uh, older, uh, older years uh, age group. Uh, this is US, this is uh, obesity. This is uh, diabetes. In the middle, the B is uh, metabolic syndrome. Uh, for the obesity, uh, the, this part is high. That is uh, about 30, 30, 35 to 40 percent. I think this is Texas. Yep. And uh, for metabolic syndrome, same in Texas. And there is uh, about uh, red color is uh, 35 to 40 percent. And diabetes. Texas diabetes is not, not so too bad, but around New York, maybe Washington, D.C., more diabetes. So different uh, state of U U U U.S., slightly different, but generally speaking, it's quite high. About 34% uh, of adults meet the criteria for the metabolic syndrome. That is, one in four people meet the diagnosis standard. And in Hong Kong, about 28.8% adult has the metabolic syndrome. <coughs> Nearly one in one is three. It's a very high prevalence for diagnosis metabolic syndrome. This date is from uh, <coughs> Shanghai. Shanghai at uh, a study in Shanghai found the prevalence is 17.14 percent. In, in the age from 20 to 74 years age group. This paper is published uh, <coughs> at 2003. Currently should be higher than this, I think. How about London? 
This is West London's <coughs> West London. This is a uh, European people and uh, South Asia people and uh, Africa Caribbean people, a different uh, nation group. And this is the male and female. So you can see, uh, first we can find the South Asia <coughs> have more metabolic syndrome. You know, in the London, we have many South Asia, uh, Indian, Pakistan, Mon Bangladesh, many South Asia, uh, they have more uh, prevalence to have uh, diabetes and uh, hypertension and uh, high cholesterol. So male is higher than female. Male is higher than female. That is according to WHO's diagnosis criteria. And if use the European diagnosis criteria, same, also South Asia people is the highest but different is, it seems female is more than male. <coughs> female is higher than male. So a little different because they use different uh, diagnosis standard. This is WHO standard, this is European standard. So European person seems much less than South Asia people and also less than Africa. This report can be found in here. Uh, that is about uh, published in 2005. And next is the metabolic syndrome prevalence in Netherlands. I have uh, many students in Netherlands. As, uh, I also deliver this lecture in uh, Amsterdam. So I have uh, uh, this uh, some data from, from Netherlands. So Netherlands metabolic syndrome seems a little lower than other country. So after modern study, after, from 1993 to 1995, the mayor is 19%, females 12%. And uh, another research from 98 to 99, male is 16% and female only 10%, which is much less than <coughs> other European country. And some metabolic syndrome can be no symptoms <coughs> or just the very little symptoms. Some can be many symptoms, very significant. For example, some people blood pressure high, they feel very significant headache, dizziness, but some symptoms, a part of a metabolic syndrome can be no symptoms. If they didn't do the physical check, to they, they can't find anything no uh, no symptoms like normal person so it's easy to be ignored but actually the risk is much still high no matter you have symptoms or no symptoms more symptoms or less symptoms but the risk is the same <coughs> as i said it like a ticking time bomb so, because metabolic syndrome is the pathogenic basis of the arteriosclerosis, arteriosclerosis, and arteriosclerosis can cause in the cardiovascular disease, like heart attack, and the heart attack can be myocardial ischemia, can be myocardial infection, can, can be just a sudden diet of coronary heart disease, sudden dies. And also it can affect the cerebral vascular disease causing the wind stroke. 
So if this disease happened, sometimes it's too late to treat. Many people died suddenly. So if we want to reduce the risk, we need to get him metabolic syndrome under control. Control the blood pressure, control the blood sugar, control the blood lipid. So you see the risk factor of a CHD, coronary, uh, coronary heart disease is hypertension, obesity, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, smoking and alcohol, inherent factors and lack of exercise and stress. So the top four is <coughs> all are in the metabolic syndrome. We must get them under control. And uh, alcohol and uh, smoking, <coughs> you can stop, you can control, the patient can control, can quit the smoke and alcohol. And ex do more exercise and, um, uh, and also uh, reduce the uh, stress can avoid only inherent factor we can't change. Others, it's changeable. The statistic date sold, coronary heart disease is the first killer, biggest killer in the UK. More than 1.4 million people suffer from a genre and 275,000 people have heart attack annually. CHD kills more than 110,000 people in England every year. Look at this picture. So this is the, the heart under heart disease causing the people died is biggest. And second is the cancer, all the cancer. And the third one is the respiratory disease. And then, so compared to the wall, only tiny spots in here, and murder only here. Diabetes is here, but metabolic syndrome is biggest. <coughs> Uh, <coughs> this is from China, and uh, from 2002 to 2012, uh, one in five adults in China has cardiovascular disease. And one in six people globally getting a stroke in their lifetime. You may say, actually, Western medicine has a very good effect to treating this disease. It is true. Western medicine chemical tablets always works very good effect. Can bring blood pressure down and uh, to reduce the sugar and to reduce cholesterol. No problem. But the biggest problem is Sad effect. The problem of modern medicine is if people has been diagnosed of metabolic syndrome, <coughs> they need to take many tablets, not only one. They need one tablet, at least one tablet for blood pressure, we call it hypertension. And uh, at least one tablet for cholesterol, statins and one for diabetes, like metformin. At least they need to three kind of medicine. And also some people still need to take aspirin because they have taken so many, too many tablets causing the stomach discomfort. Some doctor prescribe omeprazole to benefit their stomach and give some vitamin E. And uh, maybe if they have a, uh, depression, they will prescribe some 
antidepressant and even painkiller. <coughs> uh, more and more tablets, some people every day they need to take <coughs> a lot of chemical tablets. Each tablet getting some side effect and all the side effect accumulate together and make it the double or <coughs> triple damage of, to the human body. Let's see the hypertensions. Hypertensions have different types, beta block, ACEI, casein block, ARB, and uh, nutritis. Beta block causing slow down the heartbeat. ACI mostly cause, causing the patient dry cough. And the calcium block causing the heart failure, edema, headache. And the <coughs> nitrate causing the headache. ARB at the beginning, it shows little side effect when it uh, uh, starts to use about uh, 20 years ago. But the more and more side effect has been found in the recently, it can cause in the dizziness, headache, um, dosiness, nausea, diarrhea, cough, and uh, muscle or bone pain and the skin rush, ARB. That means angiotensin II receptor blocker, ARB. So, no matter which type of the hypertension, it always has a side effect. Of course, if you only take it for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, it doesn't matter. But these tablets, if you start to use it, you need to take it the whole life. If you use it for more than one year or two years, the side effect start to turn up. So we have to change between the different type of the hypertension. But we can't avoid, uh, totally avoid the side effect. Let's see the, <laughs> for blood lipid, for cholesterol. And the doctor often prescribe the statins. The statins can cause in cancer, liver damage, and nerve damage, irritability, and uh, cognition retard, memory loss, and loss of libido. <coughs> some people, some may even <coughs> cause in the uh, importance. So every has report, you can find the side effect report in these magazines. And uh, for anti-sugar, anti-diabetes drugs, metformin is more, most commonly used uh, in, uh, in Europe and also have some other, but every have a side effect. The metformin can cause in the gastrointestinal reaction. And the people make the people have fear bloating, nausea, vomiting about 20 to 30 percent. About 15 to 20 percent people have diarrhea. And also some people have a lactic acidosis. So that's a side effect. <coughs> For some people said uh, insulin, yeah. Insulin, <coughs> we, we can, don't you take metformin, we can use injection insulin. But insulin usually treating the type two, type one diabetes. For type, type two, usually we don't use insulin. But if you have to use insulin, insulin is also not a, a good solution. It can cause in the pain, have the risk of infection, have the uh, causing the blood stasis, and causing a uh, weight gain, put on weight. And the most important is insulin resistance. 
And if the insulin resistance is so make the insulin uh, lost the, <coughs> the function. And also sometimes can be overdoses. Very difficult to manage the doses. If ins insulin <coughs> uh, use more, it causing the blood sugar suddenly drop off too low, make the uh, patient even faint. So can Chinese medicine help? Yes. We can do a lot. And uh, when we treating the metabolic syndrome, <coughs> patients have to take a lot of the chemical tablets. Each tablet is causing a lot of side effect. And uh, in this condition, you can't stop anyone. For example, if you stop the hypertension, the blood pressure will rise up. If you stop the metformin, the blood sugar will rise up. If you stop the satin, the cholesterol will rise up. So any, any uh, tablets, you, you, you must take it every day and for the whole life. If you even you missed for a couple of doses, the blood pressure increased and the sugar level increased immediately. So that is the biggest problem. Even it, the treatment is effective, but too strong side effect. <coughs> and uh, in this condition, we can use herbs, Chinese medicine, Chinese herbs, decoction, and uh, pills, patent remedy, pills, tablets, <coughs> and acupuncture maybe. So we can use this. Maybe some people confuse, feel confused. Is Chinese medicine strong enough to treat in this condition? <coughs> to be honest, it's not strong enough sometimes. But in the mild case, in the early stage, early stage diabetes, early stage hypertension, early on the stage of hyperlipidemia, it works. Only use Chinese medicine is enough. You, the patient don't need to take the chemical medicine, just Chinese herbal medicine. We can enough, strong enough to control the early stage <coughs> hypertension or diabetes. And uh, some is not early stage, middle stage or later stage is very high. <coughs> to be honest, we have to use the waste medicine. But if the waste medicine, <coughs> use the waste medicine, Chinese medicine, we can at the same time add a Chinese herb medicine. <coughs> if we add a Chinese herb medicine, we can reduce the doses, maybe use the half doses or even one third doses. If the doses of the tablets, uh, chemical drugs, the doses was reduced and the side effect we also reduced and even never happened. For example, if you take the tablets, 10 milligram for blood pressure, for blood pressure, if you take a, a, a beta block, one kind of beta block, 10 milligram per day, causing the side effect. But if you add a Chinese herb medicine, you can reduce the, the Western medicine from 10 milligram to five milligram. Half, half tablets is enough. If the, you take half, uh, half doses, no side effect. You can use very safely without causing any side effect. Same for metformin, for starting <coughs> any medicine. If you at the same time use the Chinese herb medicine, you can reduce the doses of Western medicine, can make the side effect much less or even totally avoid the side effect. So that is what we can help. 
and also western medicine is like a, a single target a single target like like for example metformin only target on control the sugar and the statins only target on the cholesterol blood lipid and the calcium block or beta block or whatever whatever uh, any hypertension only target on the blood pressure they can't do anything they only just have the one purpose one treatment so the one 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 disease but chinese medicine is different it's multi-target multi-target maybe one tablet or one decoction one dosis of decoction it can you know chinese medicine if the decoction maybe they contain 10 or even 20 ingredients and the, each ingredients have some sub ingredients so it can not have its multi-target maybe <coughs> some ingredients for reduce blood sugar some ingredients for blood lipid some for blood pressure some for stress some for uh, uh, benefit stomach some for benefit sleep so maybe in one de decoction or pills Chinese medicine they can <coughs> at the same time it, they can have multiple target consult many different conditions that is the advantage of Chinese medicine and also uh, maybe you will said for Western medicine they need to take the whole life they can't stop but Chinese medicine even some people they don't mind to take the decoction or but very few people can take boil the herbs every day they very difficult if they boil the herbs for one month or two months they can do it but if they boil the herbs for whole year every every year very few people can do that so in this condition we can use herb tablets instead and even we can put herbs as a food therapy you need to eat food every day you need to drinking coffee or tea every day if you use Chinese herb herb tea I will introduce some herb tea, which is very convenient. Just put it in the cup and put boiled water and drinking just like you make a, a, a commonly Chinese tea, which is simple and easy. Or in many people you need to uh, you, you you need to boil the soups. You add a little herbs inside your soup, daily soup. You eating or drinking the soup a porridge that can benefit the blood pressure benefit the cholesterol and some food therapy you can do it whole life and every every day which is very safe just like uh, the food supplement so some prescription some formula is given by professor Deng and the most uh, uh, some uh, is a uh, unique he is a private uh, prescription and uh, including decoction uh, for this condition and also some uh, <coughs> is for external use for uh, food bus food food spa just uh, washing food or the decoction to washing the food for hypertension and for uh, diabetic food, diabetes food. And uh, also uh, some is, uh, uh, is a modified method for 
not only one one condition uh, you know the chinese medicine we need to do the modification uh, each time each consultation we according to patient symptoms we do the modified how to modify a formula in what condition we add which one in what condition we add uh, which herbs so according to professor Deng's clinic experience i will introduce his idea about the modification and the which com which herbs is most commonly used in treating this condition you will learn more in the next uh, three days uh, teaching yeah each day is three hours uh, uh, we can finish all of these three conditions okay now it's a uh, three minutes to three o'clock and uh, do you have any question i give you a few couple of minutes for question that's all for today thank you for your attention any question thank you dr tong we have in total 22 participants you can Unmute yourself if you have any question. Uh, let me see if any question on the chat. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Tang. Thank you very much. Yeah, you you can type your uh, message on the chat, or you can. Okay. Uh, for every uh, everybody can unmute yourself. Uh, no, you can unmute yourself and uh, talking here directly. I'm happy to answer any question. Thank you very much, Dr. Tang. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, could you hear me? <clears throat> yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you talk about um, the high blood pressure, um, so when you use the Chinese herbal medicine to control the blood pressure, um, is, is that mean, are they going to take this herbal medicine for, for um, the longer period, the whole life, or is it a short period, or what, what kind of period of time do you expect? Yes, okay, good question. <laughs> That depends on from case to case is different. Uh, if the early stage of uh, hypertension, if the blood pressure is not very high, just along the borderline, the low pressure is uh, just uh, around 90, the high pressure is maybe around 140, it's not very high. And also get the, the, the hypertension diagnosis only a couple of months or a few years. So it's early stage. I think only take the Chinese medicine is enough. And, <laughs> Some case just take it for a couple of months and it can get in control and make the blood pressure get in control and uh, and stop or, or reduce the uh, <coughs> patient can stop the take the medicine, herbal medicine, and even or just reduce maybe for uh, um, not every day, maybe every other day or twice a week. That is also good. Or oh, even uh, steers blood pressure is very stable. They can take some herb, uh, herb tea, just uh, like a uh, uh, gu hua cha, something like that. Yeah, just uh, take it uh, um, once or twice a week. That is, uh, but for some uh, very uh, high blood pressure, very, blood pressure very high, they have to take the with the medicine. Maybe they need to take their Chinese herbs also long term, but uh, if uh, they come, I usually I suggest people to patient to take the decoction for one or two months. After that, change to the food therapy. The food therapy just uh, like uh, drinking just a, a, a Chinese tea. Yeah, some Chinese tea, not only gochi gochi ji hua We have also have several other different. I will introduce several other different uh, herb tea. They, you can change, for example, this week we use this kind of tea, and next week we use another kind of tea. So uh, you can change from a different time. 
the long-term use it, it benefits the blood pressure. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. My second question is um, for hyperlipidemia um, patient, um, do you think the Chinese herbal medicine can replace an and certain medication? Uh, again, uh, we can't say it can replace the satin, uh, but we can help, we can reduce the doses of satin. At the <coughs> uh, early uh, mild case, for example, if some people's uh, blood uh, cholesterol is uh, not very high, just slightly high, like 5.5 or, or 5.3, 5.5 were uh, minimal, and uh, we can use uh, Chinese uh, uh, herb medicine is enough to, to control blood sugar, uh, blood lipid. But if it's more than that, it's a, if it's uh, over seven minimal, and uh, even seven or six is too high, so uh, even eight minimal, that is, uh, I, I don't think Chinese herbs can, uh, can bring the blood lipid done, but we can reduce the doses of the statin. I have a read a, a report and currently the Western medicine, uh, some uh, the experts, they believe they're not necessary to reduce the cholesterol uh, with the statin at the moment. Yeah, even in the US, as uh, they have a, a different uh, expert have a different uh, opinion about uh, cholesterol. Yeah, some people believe just leave it, uh, not necessary to reduce the blood lipid. Blood lipid high is, is it's okay. If you leave it, uh, it doesn't matter. But sugar level high uh, sometimes can cause in the dangerous and blood pressure high even more dangerous. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Tang. Uh, You're welcome. Thank um, Dr. Wang, um, who set up this, um, very useful and very looking forward to your future lecturing. Thank you. Um, any other question? Uh, Dr. Tang, can you read in the chat conversation? Uh, I can see a question. Where is the conversation? On the co conversation. Uh, let me let, let me read for you. Have you got any statistic regarding the metabolic syndrome in UK? How many adults in a hundred suffer from? Oh, not I have uh, quite a lot of question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, is there any statistic uh, regarding the metabolic syndrome in UK? How many adults in a hundred? Uh, I show uh, the statistics in the London, in the West London. <laughs> As for the whole UK, yeah, should have this one, but I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, check this. <coughs> uh, this is a very interesting question. You can, it's easy, you just uh, 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 find it, uh, the, the prevalence of the uh, metabolic syndrome uh, in UK, <laughs> I think uh, should be quite high. Uh, according to different age group or different uh, uh, which diagnosis standard. And I think uh, definitely more than 20%. Yeah, I think, yeah. Uh, Netherlands quite low uh, is already uh, for me, it's 19%. Uh, I think uh, UK more than 20%, uh, definitely. Uh, I, I show this slide uh, in... <coughs> this is data is from the West London. What is it? This is West London, it is for... <coughs> Uh, European person uh, for May is 20%. And uh, for South Asia country is 46%. And 
Ethylcarabine is a 36% for men. Yeah. So that is uh, from a uh, London's uh, date. Yeah. Whole UK, <coughs> I think you should have this uh, uh, similar. Um, Dr. Tongzi, I read the conversations. Uh, most of them are about uh, for the logging the class, uh, etc. Mute. One question uh, someone asked, are you going to, uh, are we going to receive the PowerPoint in our class or in our mail or something like that? Uh, yes, uh, this PowerPoint I will uh, upload to to this. Uh, to the class? You mean? Uh, to this, uh, to this, just uh, in this uh, platform. Mm -hmm. I, I will upload here and uh, you can visit and download here. Because uh, today this one hour uh, lecture is a free lecture, so of course the PowerPoint is also free to download. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tang. Yeah. Um, I, I think the, this is our first uh, uh, live class to use this new um, the platform for our teaching, NACA. Um, although there are some technical problems at the beginning, but uh, we're still running very well. Uh, there are in total 21 participants joining the class. And uh, some of them, uh, during the class, I give them some uh, guidance, such as they need to check their email to click the link. Some, some participants, maybe they did not check their, uh, their email to click the link. And maybe some participants, because of you use different device, such as laptop or mobile phone, maybe they have some other problems. Okay, if no more questions, uh, yeah. let's go for today. Thank you for attention. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Tang. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye.